Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into college athletics. And my guest today is Betsy Mitchell. She is the athletic director at Caltech uh, University. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so uh, Betsy, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So uh, where'd you go to school? Well, I'm a, lo I'm a Longhorn. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I went to the University of Texas at Austin. All right. So uh, let's just go back a little bit in time. Um, let's go into high school before uh, you got to college. Uh, was it something that you always wanted to do or did you get recruited to go to college? How did it all begin for you in high school and what year did it begin for you? Sure. So I'm from a very small town in Ohio, Marietta, Ohio. And my swimming was absolutely um, a key to the outside world. Um, so I, I, I didn't go to high school with kids who thought they were going to go to college. And so when I became a swimmer, when I became having some success, and we started traveling around, my world expanded. And all of a sudden, I started thinking about college. Um, so the answer to your question is both. Okay. I, I was I was getting better as a junior and senior in high school, and so I was attracting some attention mm -hmm. from college coaches. But really, it didn't going to college didn't enter my lens until probably my sophomore or junior year in high school. Gotcha. So and that was that was the early '80s. So how did you uh, how did you end up picking University of Texas? Well, I actually transferred. So I started off at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Okay. I loved the school. It was a very good school. My guidance counselor said, my gosh, if you can get in out of state, you should go to UNC Chapel Hill. <laughs> and um, the coach wanted me to come, and I went, and I, and I didn't like it. Hmm. I just didn't like it. And the coach and I didn't get along very well. Okay. And so I called uh, the coach at Texas and I said, I made a mistake. You know, is there still a spot for me there? And he was so gracious and said, of, of course. So I transferred to get to the University of Texas. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. is that difficult to transfer from one school to another? I think it depends on the schools involved and also the sport you play. Okay. Um, as a swimmer, you know, as an individual sport person, my times sort of speak for themselves. Right. Team roster, team rosters can be bigger and a little in flux. It's not really very many quotas. And um, I think in team sports, that's a lot different, right? What's what system? What strategy does the coach have? Do they need a a big tall center or a scrappy little point guard or or a, a center or a kicker or whatever? Um. So it, it wasn't hard, but I did have to sit out a year. UNC was just mad enough uh, that I was leaving them. And so they held me back. Mm -hmm. But that was okay because I, I took the year to really dig into school. And, um, and then I had three more years of eligibility left after that. Great. So now you're at University of Texas. Uh, how's the swimming program there while you were there? What, what's going on at the school? Well... The University of Texas is a special place, and 25 years ago, Austin, Texas was a gem. It's it's a major metropolitan area now. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a great town. The music's always been awesome. Fun, fun place to go to school. Um, we were pretty good. Uh, we we won the national championship every year I was there. Wow. Which made it five in a row. For the University of Texas, so it, it was a special time and a special place. Um, I, I had a, a great college education there. It was perfectly matched. There were, you know, it's a big school, so there were lots and lots of courses, you know, and and I could make it work with my school schedule or with my swim swim schedule. Yeah. Um. I, I it was exactly the right fit for me. <laughs> So now you're graduating from University of Texas. How does one go from there to uh, the athletic director at Caltech? 
Well, we had an athletic director at Texas, Donna Lopiano, who was a major force in amateur sports and in college sports in the 70s and 80s. And I just wanted to be like her. I, I just wanted to follow in her footsteps. She was so positive and so driven and so passionate about college athletics. And uh, I thought, gosh, if, if I could make even half the impact on half the people that she has, that, that, that would be a great thing. <laughs> so I, I wanted to coach so that I knew what it was like for coaches. Yeah. And so I went to Dartmouth College and I was the women's swim coach for six years. Wow. Um, I did some rowing coaching along the way as well. And then I became athletic director at two different high schools. Um, and then a college, a small college, Allegheny College, mm -hmm. said, hey, we want you to do this work for us. And then uh, similar came along. Caltech wanted to change their culture and came and found me, and I've been here seven years. So it's just been a combination of coaching, yep. high school athletics, um, and then uh, and then a small college athletics. So you, you're uh, a little modest. Uh, I was <laughs> reading a little bit about you. Uh, you're also an Olympian. And, I am. And uh, could you just tell the audience a little bit about your Olympic career? Well, I was very fortunate to be a late bloomer. <laughs> in, in, in my sport, before me, there were a lot of young, young kids who really enjoyed their best swimming as young teenagers. And after me, we have kids sort of getting good in college and extending their swimming careers into their 20s and even 30s. And I was right in the middle. And uh, my Olympic career was 1984, which was after my freshman year in college, mm -hmm. and then bookended in 1988, the year I graduated from college. I did my best swimming in between in college, world championships, world records, traveled the world while I was a college student. So it was just really the right sweet spot for me. Yeah. Now, th does that take uh, a, a lot of work because of the schooling that, that goes on, plus all the travel that you have to do? Well, I, I think that's why one reason why Texas was a perfect match for me, because it's big enough that they offer lots of classes within the same major. You know, when you go to a small school, uh, often there's just one section of the class that you either want to take or have to take. Yeah. Right, and so you find yourself lockstep towards the degree that you want. And I was in education major, and uh, that was a, a very general uh, uh, degree. Sure. So I was able to take a lot of classes that met once a week, uh, and or the classes were offered frequently. Right. Every term, every semester, and in the summer. So I was able to make it all work. So as a student athlete, is that usually uh, the case that student athletes try to do is try to take those type of classes once a week type classes? Again, I think it's very particular to the kind of place that you're at, mm -hmm. the sport that you play, uh, and then what major you want to take. Yeah, It's very, very dependent. So that's important for students to ask mm. questions in the recruiting process, right? not only of their coach, but of the academic advisor, of the academic support, right? Go meet with the registrar's office. Yeah. You know, because if you have some sense of what you want to study, you don't want to get to a school and have the coach say, oh, no, 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 that won't work. That won't work, <laughs> that won't work here, right? If you're our starting pitcher, no, 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 that won't work. Yeah. Um, and and so it's, it's just very... The mix is different at every school. So now uh, Caltech, let's get into Caltech. Uh, what does the athletic director do at a university like Caltech? Yeah. Well, I'm the director of athletics, physical education, and recreation. So I have three parts to my job. Right? We have 18 Division three intercollegiate teams. So I'm the athletic director for that. I We have... 12 head coaches, 18 different programs, 
uh, support staff, athletic trainers, sports information directors. Um, and then I have physical education because at Caltech, physical education is still a requirement wow. for every undergrad. Wow. So uh, it's a core requirement. So we offer 25 physical education courses a term. So I have, I have all the people that teach those courses. <laughs> And then I'm also in charge of recreation. So that means the facilities, um, the leagues that people play in, just providing general access yeah. to health, fitness, wellness, recreational activities for, for 5,000 people. So our, our staff, our faculty, um, the Jet Propulsion Lab that Caltech manages. So all those people can, can come here and, and use our facilities to recreate. So there, uh, recreational wise, um, what the what does that consist of? Just like a club team type of environment, or is it uh, robotics or things like that? You know, b both. Uh, we we have we have a lot of folks who ask to use our fields to uh, test their drones, <laughs> and uh, and ask to uh, use our pools to test their submarines and <laughs> and those kinds of things, but. Uh, no re regular inter intramural leagues that you would expect. Mm -hmm. uh, club sports, there are, there are only a few organized club sports here, but anything that, that gets people out of the lab and, and doing something physical. Yeah. Now, uh, so the, the other things uh, for students and student athletes uh, and coaches, so how do you coordinate? Do the coaches do majority of the work and you're just overseeing, making sure that everything is, is done correctly? Well, certainly as a manager, right? I, each of the head coaches reports to me. The support staff uh, also report to me. So I view myself very much as a coach of coaches, okay. right? And in helping my entire department do their specific function as well as they can do it. Right. So I'm not the expert in sports information, but I have to ask the right questions to help our, our, our SID put, put on a great, put on a great public face for us. Uh, I'm not our basketball coach, but I need to help our basketball coach, right? With all of the hats that they wear mm -hmm. from recruitment to teaching and coaching alumni work. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a master of all trades for our D3 coach. Um, so I, I, I see myself as supporting everyone else. Now, clearly, I have to make decisions, often hard decisions. I have to allocate resources. You know, I have to get and allocate the resources. And I'm in charge of all the human resources. So hiring, developing, orienting, when necessary, moving someone on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, everything, everything stops on my desk. <laughs> But everything starts with everyone else, and I just try to help them do the best they can. So give me a little uh, sense of uh, the atmosphere at Caltech. What's the school like? Where are you actually located in California? Um, give me a, a sense of the school and what student and student athletes would, uh, would go into if they picked a school like Caltech. Well, Caltech is a very unique school. Uh, there's 975 undergraduates. So there's only 230 students in the freshman class. Wow. It's a very small place. And in part, that's its beauty. Uh, you, you pick Caltech if you want a, a very small, intimate, supported experience in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's a STEM school. We certainly have humanities courses and social science courses, but it's focused on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. So we have folks who want to uh, pursue their PhD in those fields, pre-med, engineering of, of all kinds, right? Um, medical research, uh, uh, material science, um, any anything that has a, a, a rigorous undergraduate science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, so we have students from all over the world. Mm. We have students from all over the country. But we're a small school. Um, for the intellectual 
an academic rigor if we have peers, and I don't know that we do have peers, but if we have academic peers, they would be Stanford, Harvard, Princeton. Mm -hmm. um, and if we, and so if you think about it from a student life perspective, we would have small school peers for that. So the University of Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, Emory, K Carnegie Mellon, um, other small engineering-based schools. Yeah, and and so uh, the atmosphere. What's the atmosphere at the school like? Well, I would say intensely academic. Um, we we truly have the brightest students. Our median SAT math is eight hundred. Wow. So uh, it, it is the cream of the crop for STEM students. Uh, they are curious. They are um, uh, fascinatingly intelligent. And, you know, in our part of the world, they're also just 18 to 22-year-old kids who are trying to get, you know, from high school to launched adulthood. So yeah. we're dealing with student development, student growth. We're trying to help them in any way, just be kids, you know, taking that next step. And they're the ones that, that want to still play sport. So this is a very important part of their self-identity. And um, when they're not in lab, they want to do something fun like this. And where, where are you located in California? We're in Pasadena, California. So in Southern California, we're about 10 miles from downtown LA. Hmm. We're almost equidistant, um, 45 minutes to the beach at Santa Monica, and 45 minutes to the top of Mount Wilson. Wow. And then Big Bear for skiing is another hour. Wow. The desert, say on beyond that, we're an hour and a half from Palm Springs. <laughs> um, you know, we, we really have a lot, a, a, a tremendous geographic diversity right here. So is the, uh, the student athlete that comes to school there, um, are they highly academic as well? I mean, uh, are they taking all the engineering classes and so on? We define Division Three. You cannot tell our student athlete population from our student body population. You know, it's supposed to be a very integrated experience. We don't dip, chip, list, slot, uh, you know, for, for students who want to play sports. But the good news is we don't have to. There are brilliant kids who want to play sports in college and pursue the premier STEM uh, academic experience they can have. And so um, it certainly is challenging for our coaches to match, you know, make that match and fit. Yeah. Um, but 225 of them are here playing sports and going to change the world, transform the world through their science. Now, a lot of people, the biggest concern for moms and dads are financial. Uh, just like every other school in America, uh, Caltech is not cheap. Um, so how do you combat uh, a student athlete that wants to come to school there and what does the school offer? Sure. So we work closely with the student and the family to make sure they know their options, right? How to finance uh, a Caltech education. Our coaches stay out of that picture because they're not supposed to be in that picture. <laughs> and uh, our financial aid office handles that. But we uh, offer admission without regard to need. Okay. And then our financial aid office works their tail off to make sure that a student can afford it, right? Through a combination of parent contribution through the FAFSA, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what, what that should be by the federal government um, formula. Right. And then adds either grants or uh, loan aid. You know, the one thing that uh, we do tell folks that are interested is we have the highest graduate starting salary of anywhere in the country. Wow. So our, our average graduate comes out making $80,000 a year. Fantastic. If they, want, if they want to. So that's a pretty helpful thought if you're asked to take loans out, right, to, to, not, to, to know that you're going to come out making a good wage and you can pay back what you need to pay back, uh, that you're not just uh, just living on ramen after school as well. <laughs> Nothing wrong with living on ramen. I, I, I got through college on ramen. <laughs> but, you know, of, of course, that's a really hard piece of it. 
but but as a Division three member, we're not doing athletic scholarships. Right. So we're doing regular financing counseling through our financial aid office. Right. So things like uh, at Division three schools, usually uh, merit money, academic money, uh, things of that sort. Is that correct? And, and Caltech has those things, too. It just has nothing to do with their athletics. Correct. And it has all, all to do with their brain. Okay. So now, um, student athletes, um, you said that they come from all over the globe. Uh, how are your coaches, how, how, are they, how are they finding all of these students? Sure. We have one uh, leg up in that if a student is right for Caltech, they're probably going to know it and already have us on their radar. Hmm. It's, that, it's that unique a place. Um, but our coaches are pounding the pavement in all of the ways at the academic showcases, uh, relying on lists that students self-select into that would cross their desks in. Uh, it's pretty easy to say, you know, what, what are your SAT scores? What are your subject test scores? What are your STEM activities? Right? What have you published or patented or researched? Um, but so our, our coaches are out there pounding the pavement, but it's it's uh, much different than a school like Allegheny where I was last, which could take a broad umbrella of kid, mm. right? Um, usually a, a STEM focused kid is going to have us on their radar. Sure. And and out of the uh, twelve sports, um, not every sport is uh, is great, right? So uh, there's some sports that uh, people tend to come to Caltech to say, "Hey, I, I I can play that sport just as good as anyone else uh, that are better than others." Well, I think I, I would disagree with you. I think each of our sports is becoming very very competitive. In a very competitive league, we're in the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Mm -hmm. There are nine Division three schools right here wow. in the greater in the greater LA area, uh, an hour apart. It's a very strong conference. So, um, what are some I, of the you know, sports I, with that they would play? Well, so our sports are basketball for men and women, water polo for men and women, volleyball for women, baseball for men. Um, men's and women's soccer, and then swim and dive, tennis, cross country, track and field, and fencing wow. for both men and women. So we offer a broad, uh, broad menu, um, and and each of those teams is in its own place, right? Every team goes up and has down, and up right. and has down. But but by and large, our teams are becoming a lot more competitive than they have been in the past. That's great, fantastic. So. Um, Tell me on, on uh, students that are that, uh, coming to school there, um, what can they expect when they get there? They can expect a beautiful campus. It's, it's an arboretum. It's like a little arboretum. Uh, uh, it's beautiful. They can expect ca caring educators that are helping them during a really dynamic time of their life. From our coaching staff, to our residents' life staff, they can expect to be pushed outside their comfort zone by their by their faculty members. Uh, it, it is tremendously rigorous, difficult academic experience. Um, they can expect to transform the world, literally, um, by the kind of place that this is. Um, they will be they will be introduced to things that'll blow their mind. And from our part of the, and from our part of their world, you know, they can expect to have a high quality competitive experience on um, on teams with their peers who are living with, studying with, and playing with. And they can uh, they can come pretty much any time of the year to to visit the school, see see the school, things of that sort. Absolutely, we're we're here 365, um, and you know, I, they can drop by. But it's probably safer if they really have a passion for a sport. They could call the coach or email the coach and make sure that one of us is around because mm -hmm. our coaches are quite busy and they're on and off campus recruiting. But uh, someone here would be more than happy to take uh, take a minute and talk with somebody. Great. So uh, we're coming to the end of our show. 
And uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the families that their sons and daughters uh, want to come to a school like Caltech? The college process is so much about match and fit. And so I just encourage any family, whether they're a student athlete or not, to, to ask 100 questions, maybe 200 questions, and to not just passively take the information that the coach or the admissions officer is, is giving you. Right. Only you know you really know yourself and what's important for you. And so spend some time thinking about that as you enter this process and, and ask a ton of questions and ask questions in different ways so that you get the same answers. Right. You get authentic answers um, and mostly mostly enjoy this time of your life. This is such a rich time of your life where you get to do exactly what you want to do. It does. It's not always like that. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Anthony, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.